Hey, what's going on, everybody? Saturday morning. Actually, uh, very nice out. Very good weather. Um, it's currently August the 12th, 2023. And I have been in Amtrak Conductor School four weeks. Halfway there. Halfway down. And, um... I've been documenting the journey, the process. Uh, I know a lot of this stuff I've been talking about, it really hasn't been as detailed as I would have liked it to have been or be. And um, the reason why is because a lot of the stuff that we uh, talk about or, or deal with, like materials, has confidential on it, private confidential so, of course, I'm not going to uh, disclose anything that they don't want being public knowledge. But, of course, it's Amtrak. It's America's railroad. Uh, you have the corridor. The corridor, Amtrak owns the, their own tracks, their own infrastructure, their own signals, their own uh, mechanical engineering team, whatever. But off corridor, we use... Uh, Post railroads. So off corridor would be CSX, Norfolk Southern, and such. So the location I'm gonna be working out of, Jacksonville, Florida, it would be considered a uh, off corridor location because we're not on the Northeast Corridor. We're off corridor, and the trains are considered LDTs, long distance trains. So I'm from North Carolina originally and in a 24 hour period you would see I believe it was at least 10 Amtrak trains within a 24 hour period because one goes to Savannah and one starts out of Savannah so that's two and then uh, one goes to uh, I believe it was see the Raleigh I believe it starts in Raleigh and goes to Raleigh so that's four. And then you have uh, the auto train, which leads out of Sanford and goes to Lordson, Virginia. So two uh, trains there, there's six. But see back where I'm at, currently located in Jacksonville, Florida, there's only uh, two northbounds and two southbounds in a 24 hour period. So I believe it's uh, P091, P092, and then uh, PO 97, PO 98. And um, within a 24 hour period, there will be four Amtrak trains that pass through the terminal. So those are the only trains that uh, we will be protecting. So, which I'm actually really excited about it. It's not gonna be where it's a bunch of trains getting called all over the place. And it's, it's, it's gonna be more of a, somewhat uh, structured schedule even though it's your own call at least I can kind of pretty much plan and prepare for when I'm going to work because there's only four trains uh, that we protect and uh, the auto train does go through Jacksonville it starts in Sanford Florida and goes to Lordson Virginia and then you got so that's PO 52 and you got the southbound one that leaves Lorton, Virginia, and goes to Sanford, Florida. So that's PO 53. But those are run through trains. They don't stop anywhere. Once you get on that train, you can actually put your car on the rear of the train. It's the auto train and ride it. And that train is to alleviate traffic off of the busy interstates. So if you're traveling, you know you're going from Florida to Virginia. And further, you can ride the auto train, just sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery, and ride the auto train. So, I talked about a little bit of uh, Amtrak, uh, what it does, uh, America's Railroad, America's Track, Amtrak, uh, depending on where you're at, on corridor, off corridor, LD train, see the, the four trains that I'm going to be protecting, they all start. So, uh, PO 91 and PO 97 starts out of New York. 
and run southbound to Miami and then PO 92 and then uh, PO 98 starts out of Miami and runs northbound to New York so uh, for the most part every train has a counterpart one goes one direction and then you have another one going the opposite direction within a 24-hour uh, period so in terms of the actual uh, program it's been uh, it's been an experience uh, it's definitely uh, different from freight it is not the same it's, it's, it's definitely different from freight one of the biggest reasons why like uh, grooming a like uniform grooming uh, it's very strict policy with grooming with uh, very strict policy with the uniform so with uh, with freight railroads it may not be the ideal thing to do but you could be cutting grass so anyone who has ever cut grass before in the summertime knows how you would get hot smelly sweaty you've been sunburned you've been in the sun all day cutting grass well you could be cutting grass in the phone ring for you to call for you to get called to go to work and literally like, you just leave the lawnmower right there and get in the truck and drive to work and get on the train that's the type of i'm trying to paint a picture for you but with uh amtrak that wouldn't fly because uh you're the face of the company you're you're in the you're in the public eye so you have a standard to uphold so you want to look presentable you want to uh, uh have good hygiene you want because you're going to be dealing with uh, hundreds of customers on a, a daily basis so you want to present yourself in a professional manner i'm not saying that you're not able to do that if you were cutting grass but ideally if you're cutting grass you're not just going to go and get off the lawnmower and walk and, and go get on a train for 12 hours dealing with hundreds of customers because you're you're assisting customers you're helping customers you're directing customers to uh their correct uh location the gate you're helping them uh board you're helping them detrain um you're making announcements uh you're handling any customer service issues that arise so it's, it's a lot of uh it's a lot of uh aspects to look at so with freight in my humble opinion i feel it is more i feel it is more being available stand marked up dealing with the elements so I'm, I'm, I love giving an example I'm going to give you a great example so for example I'm, I'm actually about to walk by the rail yard where I've been recording a lot of uh, trains so if we came from Maryland Baltimore, Maryland and on our work order it said that we have to set off 75 cars at the uh, CSX Wheelsmere Yard here in uh, Wilmington, Delaware well, it don't matter if it's 115 degrees, feels like 130. It doesn't matter if it's snowing and it's 15 degrees outside. It doesn't matter if it's if it's raining cats and dogs. It doesn't matter. When you get to the yard, you have to get down, do your business. You got to handle your business. You got to make the set off. And it's like you're dealing with the elements. You're dealing with... Uh, <clears throat> the dirty equipment. I mean, you can wear nice stuff, but normally when you climb up on a rail car, it has dust on it, so you're going to brush up against the air hoses or the safety appliances. So, being available, because you could get called at any time. Yes, freights have scheduled trains that run, but also they have extra trains. Like As I have explained uh, before you can have a side I'll give you an example you can have a siding that has 50 flat cars in that siding and, it, and it's been sitting there for weeks and weeks and weeks months and months and months maybe even a year it's just storage because it's extra equipment that's not being utilized well there are so many departments say like uh, a move come up where they're going to be moving machinery from the west coast to the east coast or say like a short line railroad is going to start uh, hauling some type of material and they, they want to buy X amount of flat cars. Well, you have departments that are quarterback all of it. And one day 
when you're at the house, you look at the board, so you're like, hey, I don't think I'm getting called today. And you randomly get called for an X105. And, and you say, what the heck is an X105? And, and normally the crew caller wouldn't have the information for you. They'll say, call the train master. So you call the train master, and they'll say, it was like, yeah, you know those flats that's in the, uh, that's on the uh, Eggers branch line? You talking about those cars that's like 10 miles sh shoved all the way back down there? Yeah, you, you need to go pull them. Oh, man. Dang. Cannot believe I got called for this, man. Dang. So it's like, and, and like, well, where the engine at? Y'all got a taxi. You got a taxi to, uh, you got a taxi to the ramp. Get, get your engines. Two engines in the pocket track. So we go on duty at, for example, Moncrief. And we got to wait on a bus. The bus going to taxi us to uh, the ramp. And then when we get to the, the ramp, it's just always something. See, I, I already know how the story is going. It's all, one of the engines is going to be jacked up, and it's like it won't start. And then it's like it just it just starts. See how it's just starting to add on? And you're like, I wasn't even supposed to be here today. I was supposed to be off. Why couldn't they wait till tomorrow to call this? They just had to call this tonight at 1 o'clock in the morning. Why? You know, I, had, I actually had plans in the morning. So if anybody is watching this video and listening to what I'm saying, I'm telling you exactly how it is some of the things you deal with is really not the actual job it's a lot of the external variables you know and um one thing with freight as i explained things you have to deal with but with amtrak it's more uh customer service focus it's a uh, customer uh base um because without the customers of course the passengers we, we wouldn't even need the train would be no point for running the Amtrak trains and I'm excited about uh, just being in the public eye just being able to help and serve uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to help people uh, board the train the train I help people with their luggage um, I got stopped numerous times people are asking about connecting trains or what uh, gate what terminal to go to and I actually got a sense of uh, enjoyment from that with freight you don't deal with any uh you do but you don't you don't deal with any customers per se uh sometimes if you're working for example a paper mill it could be different the way it's set up uh you could have to go and speak to shipping so say like uh we run the train to the paper mill the first thing to do is for me to get down go and try to find somebody in shipping so I asked them what they want, and I was like, yeah, I want to pull all the boxes on A side, give me eight boxes, and then pull all the boxes on B side, give me six boxes, you know, and try to give me all high cube box cars if you got them. So give me an example and exactly how it would be. And then you'll have to look at your onboard and try to find the cars. Some customers are spot specific, meaning the actual cars got to be in a specific spot. Some customers... It don't matter what cars go where. They just want eight box cars because they load in paper. That's all that matters. But with Amtrak, it, you're not dealing with none of that. We're dealing with um, how to uh, de-escalate situations. We're dealing with how to uh, the proper way to communicate with customers. Uh, we're dealing with uh, how to present yourself in a professional manner. Uh, we're dealing with uh, a, a total different aspect of railroading, which I'm very excited. Guys. I'm very motivated halfway there. Um, I'm a little disappointed, very disappointed because I'm doing very well on my tests. And one of my tests, I made a 98. And my goal was to finish with a 100%. So I was very disappointed with that. Because my goal was 100% on all my tests. That's the goal I set for myself. And I messed up. It was a, uh, it was a test I took. And the question was, a, it, it was tricky. It was a trick question. So, missed one. So, hopefully I still reach my goals. If not, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the plans. But, um... 
I'm always about to cross this yard. Uh, just thought I'd give you a good update on the progress, the class, uh, the difference between freight railroads and uh, passenger railroading. Um, they're excited, motivated, and uh, I hope everything works out. I hope. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope I can stay busy and just keep my mind focus on the goal. That's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Um, like I said, I've been in the hotel for four weeks. And uh, sometimes it's good just to get out and get some fresh air and uh, clear your mind. And um, try to hit the reset button on the weekend. And... Uh, how to make it happen well i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video if you like this video if you gain any knowledge or if it helped you out in any way all i ask you could please share this video uh, if you're not a subscriber to this channel please subscribe to my channel i'm really trying to grow it um also like the video so it could be recommended to others and um to all my current subscribers thank you i really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you have any questions i always try to respond to everyone's uh comments questions thank you and uh i hope everyone has a, a beautiful weekend until next time we'll see you hey look you would not believe this as soon as i i ended the video and stepped across the tracks. The lights activated. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep, something coming because I can see the other road crossing down there activated. Here we go. I needed this. Apply the train brakes. You're it clicking. Hear the brakes squealing now. Look at the brake cylinders right here. See the brake cylinder extended. This is the same operation procedure in my last video that I made last Thursday on August the 10th. So this, this must be some type of uh, procedure or operation. The train, it comes, 
and it comes down and pulls up and it stops covered the crossing and then the conductor gets down and go I guess get some type of paperwork it's the same exact uh, movement that I got last Thursday And see, he's getting down. The conductor Thursday had an orange vest on. When I hired out, you used to have to wear a high-vis uh, hat. So that lets you know that you had less than one year of service. Well, now the new hires, the trainees, have an orange vest. So if you see an employee with an orange vest, that means they have less than one year of service. So it was a rule if you see an employee that has like a yellow hat on for me or currently a, a orange vest you are to like kind of keep an eye on them watch them make sure that they're doing the correct process make sure they're doing the correct uh procedures keep an eye on them because they have a uh, little experience that was a rule man I wish I could get in the engineer's seat and I wish I could I could run it down to the other end of the yard. Man, whoo, I wish I could. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, slack stretched out. The only thing you have to worry about in this instance, depending on your train, when you knock the brakes off, how you stop could determine if the train rolls out. So, for example, say like there was a, a downgrade. So it's a curve and then it drops down. Well, if he stopped with the slack bunched, when the engineer is ready to proceed, when he knocks the brakes off, all of that weight is going to start rolling. So that's how you can have the slack run out and you can get a knuckle. So that's why when... In, in my opinion, uh, being an engineer is an art and you, you, you work towards mastering your craft. So it's, it's not rocket science, but you just have to put thought into what you're doing, how you start, how you stop, how you're coupling, and you become a master at your craft. You become a master at what you're doing. So even before this crew got to this location, if I know we were making the set off or pickup and I know we're stopping here, I'm already thinking in my head how I'm going to stop. So even when I'm if, if I'm coming uphill, because I said it was uphill, for example, I would have the throttle in a position where the slot is going to stay stretched out. And then I come around the curve. I come around the curve and then exactly what he did. He just grabbed some train brake. He grabbed air. So you grab a minimum service which is uh, six to eight pounds of air and then once that first reduction happens you'll grab two more pounds of air for uh, 10 pounds and if anyone watched my previous video remember I, I said when you stop you're always supposed to condition the brakes so if you grab six to eight pounds of air and you hear the click then you see the brake cylinders come out and as you're stopping you'll grab two more pounds of air for a total of 10 pounds when the train stops you want to have that you want to have the air exhausting so if if you're coming to a stop and, and the air is exhausting you did it perfectly and and then uh, how I would start reverse it forward uh, come out on the throttle let it load up knock the brakes off see how it's reacting see how it's responding then i slowly come off the independent brake and 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 when the train starts you'll probably hear it when he go to notch one you'll hear the tension in in the in the uh the draft gear and the knuckles you can hear the tension and the engines will just start loading up then once you go to notch two it'll start rolling pretty good and then depending on, because uh, uh, your EOT tells you when the rear of your train is moving. So as soon as your train starts moving, it's like, beep, beep, beep. 
EOT moving. So that's how you know you got your whole train stretched out moving. I probably go ahead to notch three. And I used to open the windows and, and turn the mirror so I could see the exhaust coming up from the engine. So I, that's how much I love trains. And as I was running, I, I got so much joy and satisfaction from what I was doing. Because some engines, when you come out on the throttle, you can see like that big gush of uh, exhaust fumes like shooting out from the exhaust. I loved it. So, and remember, there was another rule you wanted to stay uh, under notch four when you're under 10 miles per hour. But normally, if, if you got a, a pretty uh, decent train, not too heavy, once you come past notch three, notch four, you're moving along pretty good. And if you know you're gonna be taking off, you're gonna be rolling, you can go ahead and just go notch four, notch five, notch six, notch seven, notch eight. That's how I would do it. I'm in notch eight, that's all I got. Now just let them eat, I let them eat, let them rip, get them in the wind, high ball, let's do it. And um, that was a rule you're not supposed to throttle strip. So if I was in notch four, I'm not supposed to just take the throttle and go all the way to notch eight. Got a flag e rag in the road for me to uh, contact you. I'm going to pause the video until I see somebody coming back. The brace was knocked off. Look at the brake cylinder here. See the slack? See the slack move? Look at the brake cylinder going in. And you see how the slack adjusted on the train? Now imagine if there was a heavy block. Here we go. He's not gonna look more the brakes off. That's all he got with notch one. <laughs> notch two. <laughs> Did you see that? He put it in notch one and all of the slack was stretching out. But once the weight of the train was too great for the, the amount of uh, power he was applying, you see how the train stalled, stopped, and then he went to notch two. See, you don't suppose to come out on the throttle hard. That's how you rip the train in half. That was a textbook example. I cannot believe I got that. It's all I ever wanted to do. Mm.
refrigeration units coming up. You can hear the refrigeration running the, uh, the motors. Look at the exhaust on the locomotives. Look at it, look at it, look at it. I know I do not have the best camera, look at it. Look at the exhaust. Damn, let me go back. Oh man, that is a great feeling. Look at the exhaust on it. I wish I had a better camera to get it. They pulling. Oh wow, we got a DPU, DPU. Look at the locomotive in the middle of the train. The engineer controlling this locomotive remotely. Check it out.
got a feeling this is a monster train. Catch not fish. <laughs> 